What is up guys, Social Distancing Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be talking about how to increase your power level as fast and efficiently as possible so you can compete with the level 1000 sweats in Trials of Osiris. Now very importantly, this first weekend, your power level of your artifact is going to be considered. So technically, you can go to the moon and absolutely farm the crap out of the repeatable bounties in the lost sectors. That will gain you an advantage. However, only for this weekend. So in this video, we're going to be much more focusing on your gear score, getting that as high as possible because that will be the relevant power level stat going forward. Okay, so... Let's talk about those tips. Because if you do everything right, I think it's very possible to get a character to a power level of 1000 or higher in a single day of grinding. First and foremost, if you are not 950 power yet, do not do any powerful drops. The reason being is because the soft cap is at 950, which means that literally any piece of loot, any blue that drops whatever, will get you all the way to 950. After that point, you will need specifically powerfuls or pinnacle drops to get up to 1000 plus. So. That's first thing. Now, let's say you are 950 and you're looking to do powerfuls. Which ones should you do? Which activity is the best to get you powerful loot? Well, powerfuls themselves don't necessarily have a big difference in between one another. They'll almost always give you a plus five around of your base power level. However, there is one activity that's absolutely bonkers and throwing out powerful loot, and that is the competitive playlist. For whatever reason, the competitive playlist is the most efficient way to level up, and it's not even close. Now, usually, if you're in the normal Crucible playlist, you're going to get a powerful reward every time you reach a named rank. So, you've just reached Fabled. For the first time, you get a powerful. If you reach Heroic, you get a powerful, right? But, for Comp, all of the in-between rewards, so remember, if you're in Fabled, it's Fabled 1, Fabled 2, Fabled 3, and then you rank up to the next named rank. And all of those rewards along the way at 1, 2, and 3 in Comp are powerfuls. It is throwing out loot, like I said. So even if you do not like PvP and you hate Comp and you're like, oh, I don't want to do it, it's so sweaty, it's so annoying, Trust me, if you can go in and just like win your first game, basically, you are going to get three to four powerful drops just for doing that. And then honestly, at that point, it's almost worth it to, to stop. Like you can go in, just win, just win a couple, rank up once or twice, and that will be so many powerful drops. And honestly, it's really not that bad these days, especially because, firstly, all the sweaty players are in trials right now, so if you go into comp, it's not that bad. And secondly, after the solo playlist was introduced, that has been a huge help in people ranking up in comp. So even if you don't like it, I would just give it a try. Even if you lose a few, as long as you just win a couple, it is going to be worth it for the loot. Now, let's move on from there. Let's say you've done some comp or you've absolutely refused and you're doing some other stuff, a mistake a lot of people will make is just chase powerfuls. They'll see a bunch of little circles on their directory and they'll go after all of them and then get them all done and say, well, what next? The problem is that that is pretty much the least efficient way to level up. You want to get a few powerful drops. So you, again, you win that first game of comp. You, let's say you do your strikes and you get that powerful and then you maybe do uh, the flashpoint, you get that powerful. Then stop. Don't go after any more powerfuls. At that point, you need to balance your character. And what that means is after doing a few powerfuls, you're going to have a few pieces of gear that are much higher than the rest, right? You'll be 960 overall, but you'll have a 965 helmet and a 967 pair of gauntlets, right? And the problem is that if you keep doing powerfuls, if you get another pair of gauntlets, 
they're gonna be a plus one and it's gonna be basically useless. So instead, because now all gear is gonna drop like zero to three overall power levels below your character, that means that you can plug the gaps. You can go to Shax or Zavala and you can just spam your tokens and get the rewards and they'll again always be, you know, one to two overall power levels below you. So if you're 960, again in that example, you've got the 965 helmet, you've got the 67 gauntlets, and then you've only got a 55 chess piece. Well, if you go and spam Zavala and he gives you a 59 chess piece, wow, like you just got a pretty good increase. You just got a four power level increase on that piece of gear. And heck, you put that on, you could go up a whole power level. And that means all the drops you're getting are going to go up that power level as well. That is super important, but it's not quite as simple as just going to Zavala and spamming tokens. Certain vendors are gonna be just absolutely key in doing this because Every day it kind of rotates, but random vendors drop high. And that means they drop gear that is literally your exact power level. So in that example, your 960, every single piece of gear they drop from ranking them up is going to be 960, which is insanely good in plugging those gaps. Now, how do you know which vendors are dropping high? Well, you can simply Google like Destiny 2 uh, vendors dropping high. You can go to vendor engrams uh, dot X, Y, Z, and it'll look like this. So you can see, oh, Devrim K is dropping high. I've got a lot of dust like shards. I can go to him, level him up a bunch of times, fill those gaps and really ascend in power levels easily. And importantly, you're going up in power level, but you're not using up any of your powerful drops. You get a few powerful drops, they bring you up one or two uh, power levels, you balance out, those bring you up two or three more power levels, and boom, you're ascending the most efficiently you possibly can. Now, of course, with that being said, not everyone has a billion million resources, right? It's very easy to do this if it's a day that Spider is selling a resource for legendary shards that coincides with one of these vendors dropping high. So in that Devrim K example, if the Spider is selling dust-like shards, you can just go spam those, then go visit Devrim, spam him, go back to the Spider, and just that is a great way to level up if those coincide. But of course, if he's selling them for 5,000 Glimmer, you're kind of screwed. Thankfully, there's another way to do this, and that is your Seasons Pass. Your Seasons Pass armor is actually basically dropping high, and it's specific rewards. So I would highly recommend not grabbing your Seasons Pass armor until you need it, until you're filling gaps, because if you have your chest piece that's super low and you're always gonna have that one piece of gear that's lower than the others, just randomly it happens, well, you can withdraw a chest piece from your season pass and it's basically gonna be your current overall power level and it'll often raise that lowest piece of gear at four, five power levels easily and that can often raise your overall power levels. If you're wanting to do the calculation, this is how it works out. The magic number is eight, which means eight overall gear score power levels will increase your total power level by one. So, if you are 960 and literally every single piece of your gear is also 960, you're going to need to get either one piece of gear that's 968 and that will bring you to 961 overall or eight different power levels spread amongst a bunch of gear. So you can get something that's plus five and then something else that's plus three and then you're gonna to go to 961. So that is a calculation you want to do in your head. If you're looking at your gear and you're thinking, well, I can only get like plus seven, I can't get eight different power levels out of balancing, then it might not be worth it to actually do some balancing. On the flip side, if you look at your gear and you've got seven levels, you know, amongst your gear above your overall power level, that is the perfect time to do balancing. You only need, you know, plus one of one piece of gear to go up an entire power level. 
Now, I also want to mention that there is a lot of different powerful drops within the game, and sometimes people forget about them. The Nightfall, yes, it does have the 100k pinnacle reward, but it also has a random powerful reward that you get for just doing, you know, a few of the normal match-made difficulty Nightfalls. And again, a lot of people forget about that. You want to also be doing stuff as efficiently as possible in the sense of you can do stuff at the same time often and way too often people don't and it takes them way longer than otherwise would. You know, the gunsmith is offering a powerful for doing seven different daily bounties. Well, grab all of his daily bounties and then go into the strike playlist and then try to do those at the same time. The moon has a bunch of powerfuls as well. The memory quests are powerful. There's a lectern weekly that has you just kill 30 nightmares in Sorrow's Harbor. There's a daily mission, or sorry, a weekly mission that's super easy to do, but it rewards a powerful. The nightmare hunts, doing three of those give you a powerful. And then of course, doing the super hard one gives you a pinnacle, all of that stuff. So make sure you actually do all of your pinnacles. Not all of them will necessarily show very obviously on the directory. But I want to move on from there and talk about multiple characters. Like this is kind of the thing that will put you over the edge. If you are rocking two characters, you're going to level up, you know, way higher and three characters, you've got it made. Like you'll be a thousand, absolutely no problem. It's really not too difficult to balance multiple characters and it's less time consuming than people think because the main brunt of your work is going to be on that first character, which you're going to do anyways, doing your powerfuls, balancing out, doing more powerfuls, balancing out, doing more powerfuls, balancing out, doing pinnacles, right? Once you get to the point where you've pretty much exhausted your efforts, and let's say you've ended at 988, you're 988 on your main guy, and that's pretty good but you have a second character, you can transfer your 988 or around that light level of weapons to your second character, and then you just do stuff on your second character and your armor is going to fly through. Again, the normal drops are only gonna be a maximum of three power levels below your overall power level, and your overall power level is gonna be inflated massively because of your extremely high weapons on your second character. So you don't even need to touch powerfuls, you can just go and do patrol and get random drops and those are gonna make you fly up. You can also do things like hey, you've actually got the ability to claim that initial box for the season's pass if you if you bought it, and that gives you a full set of armor. So on your second character, you can just claim that box, and you're gonna get like plus 10 of every single armor piece and just shoot up in level right away. You can spend your Crucible or Vanguard tokens and every piece of armor is going to help you fly up. Like, you're gonna be able to get that second character to 980 before you've even touched a powerful or pinnacle drop. Then you just do a few strikes or whatever, and suddenly your second character is sitting at 995, and you've done half your powerfuls. And it works the other way too, right? You have your second character, you get that guy really high, you get a bunch of great weapons that are higher than ever, and then you transfer those weapons back to your original character, and he was sitting at 988, remember, but suddenly the weapons from your second character are 995, well then that guy's getting a little bit of a boost, so if you do a little bit more things on the other guy, he's gonna go up, so you can kind of balance back and forth between these multiple characters. And you can do all of those things without touching the raid, without touching a pinnacle drop. And I think that's something that a lot of people think you absolutely need to do. It certainly helps, but it is not required. You can definitely get to 990s and 1000s without touching pinnacles if you are using multiple characters, if you're balancing, if you're doing everything I talk about in this video. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.